Hello and welcome to ASPN, the Accessible Sports Programming Network, your go-to for all things para-sports. My name is Austin Clack, and joining me is my friend and co-host, Joe Derrida. Thank you, Austin. It's truly a wonderful day to talk sports, so let's get right down to it. Sports in my life, I know in your life too, Austin, and across societies have always played such a crucial role, whether that be learning a lesson about the competitive nature or just understanding and exemplifying sportsmanship. Sports truly are for the greater good. I know I have personally held athletes as my role models, but what about you, Austin? Are there any star athletes that pop into your mind? Yeah, man, I really couldn't agree with you more. Uh, when I think of the faces of big brands like Nike and Adidas, people like Serena Williams, Usain Bolt, and Michael Phelps are all brought to mind. Those absolutely shredded bodies, insane dexterity, and superhuman speed are the defining characteristics society has decided place an athlete at the top of their game. Check out this commercial of uh, Serena Williams. It's truly inspirational. Yeah, totally. She, along with those other athletes, are just truly world-class. Definite role models, in my opinion, and I personally think just in the sports world in general. Their athleticism is elite, without any doubt. You know, personally, though, thinking back to all the coaches I've had throughout my life, from t-ball to club basketball, I've never once heard from a coach that physical conditioning is superior to an individual's willingness to just persevere and better themselves. Yeah, wow, definitely. That sparks some questions in my mind, thinking back to it. Um, maybe why aren't names like Chuck Aoki, a top U.S. wheelchair rugby player, or Madison De Rosario, uh, an Australian Paralympic triathlete featured in this video? Names that top that list as well. Look at what I can do with my body and my mind. Focus. This is a race of now, not past successes or injuries or time out on the sidelines. This is not a race to set a time. This is not a race to win. It takes a win to understand that a win changes nothing. This is just another race. I guess Subway did us all a huge injustice. I could have sworn Phelps was top dog when it came to medals. See you there! Michael Phelps fuels up with the mega tasty Subway turkey melt. Yeah, actually. Uh, in fact, it might even surprise you even more that the most decorated athlete to ever compete in either the Olympic or Paralympic Games is a name you might not even have heard of. Trisha Zorn Hudson, a blind Paralympic swimmer, ended her career at the top of those charts, holding 55 medals with 41 gold medals. Wow, 55 medals. That nearly doubles Phelps 28. Yeah, and actually, as a matter of fact, in the 1988 Seoul Paralympic Games, she absolutely took over. She competed in 10 events, and not only did she win 10 gold medals, but she set 10 world records. Like, that is insane. Wow. I mean, if Hudson was really able to do that in 88, I can only imagine how many incredible athletes came before her as well as have followed after her. Yeah, no, that's right, Austin. The, uh, the list of incredible Paralympians just goes on forever. The first Paralympic Games actually were held in 1960 in Rome and saw over 400 athletes participating in eight sports coming from 23 different countries. Hmm. So we got 400 athletes competing in those first games. What's the field of athletes look like today? Well, yeah, actually, in the uh, 2016 Paralympic Games in Rio, there were 4,328 athletes representing 160 countries, which included 22 different sports. There was archery, swimming, track and field, to even powerlifting. Check out this awesome, awesome introduction video for the 2016 Games.
Yes, I can, suddenly, yes, I can. Gee, I'm afraid to go on as turned into, yes, I can. Take a look, what do you see? 133 pounds of confidence, me. Got the feeling I can do anything, yes, I can. Something that sings in my blood is telling me, yes, I can. 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 Hey, yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Are you ready? I can climb Everest. Yes, I can. I can fight here all night and never rest. Yes, I can. I was just born today. I can go all the way. Yes, Wow, that introduction video is truly amazing and actually really gave me chills watching those uh, amazing athletes and musicians. Seeing that really makes me think though, uh, the growth in the last 50 years is truly astonishing. We all know the Olympic Games have been around for over a thousand years. So just how did the Paralympics get started and grow to become such an awesome multi-sport competition event? Oh yeah, no, totally. Uh, the rise of these competitive events actually for those with disabilities came about in the decades following World War II actually giving war veterans and civilians that have been injured a new way to compete. Sports then were looked at as rehabilitative activities, giving those a chance to not only get better, but to also allow their athletic ability to flourish. So to the best of my understanding though, those first Paralympic games, as well as those in 2016 in Rio, were both summer games. Mm -hmm. What about the winter games? Yeah, no, I'm glad you asked, man. Um, the first winter Paralympic games were actually held a few years after the games in Rome held in Sweden in 1976 with 198 different athletes from 16 countries. During these games, however, there were only two sports. But in the most recent games held in 2018 in Korea, those numbers completely spiked. There are now not only 567 athletes from 49 countries, but four new sports were added to establish six Winter Paralympic sports. Wow, that's really awesome to hear. It sounds like the Paralympics have seen constant growth and support with such a wide range of athletes. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. In the, in the most recent Winter Games, we saw Paralympic athletes compete in snowboarding, alpine skiing, to even ice hockey. Sports I know I love to play, and I watch them all the time. It's really incredible how many uh, sports there are in both the Summer and Winter Games. But to be honest, I'm still just a little bit confused. So there's 22 sporting events total for the Summer Games and just six for the Winter. With such a wide range of disabilities among the participating athletes, how does this narrow diversity affect the way in which athletes compete? No, yeah, man, totally understand that confusion. But actually, uh, within those 22 summer sporting events and six winter ones, they're actually further broken into classes. This ensures that there are different levels of competition amongst disabilities, allowing a huge range of Paralympic athletes to display their insane athletic ability. Okay, so it sounds like the Paralympics have really had a detailed system for their com uh, competitive events. Totally. Let's dig a little bit deeper into classification and the actual sports yeah. and events athletes from all over the world compete in next time. 
Yeah, no, I love that idea, Austin. I really just can't wait to dive in it. Thank you, man. I'll, I'll catch up with you next time. Sounds good.